Rich Lowry on MSNBC um, with Chuck Todd and Claire McCaskill um, opine about this. I mean, this is the big thing that they're doing now. They're saying this is no big deal because I think, you know, there is, and, and Heather and I will talk more about this, and, and Emma will talk more about this too, but the, the, you know, if Democrats are smart, they're going to leverage this at least from an electoral standpoint um, on top of everything else that needs to be done. But here is, um, here's Rich Lowry on MSNBC. And, and why is he on MSNBC? <laughs> Well, first of all, people are acting as though Roe has been overturned. I would welcome that outcome, and it may eventually be in this Dobbs case, but it hasn't been overturned uh, yet at all. This is a procedural ruling that clearly was the correct one. There was no harm here yet. The eight defendants had done nothing. Even in joining them, if, if that's what happened, wouldn't have stopped uh, this law because they had their government officials have nothing to do Pause with it for one second. Pause it for one second. Law. Pause it for one second. First off, Roe v. Wade and Casey, which is a um, uh, another case, which basically says you cannot abridge this right in a meaningful way, have certainly well, Roe v. Wade says that you may not. That an abortion is a constitutional right up to 22 to 24 weeks of your pregnancy. Casey made it very clear you cannot abridge this by having sort of knock-on uh, laws. You cannot get an abortion in Texas today. And it's not because it's Labor Day weekend. It's not because it is because the passage and the, and, and the, uh, the beginning of this law. And they allowed that to happen. So Roe v. Wade is overturned. 85 to 90 percent of abortions that happened in Texas were after that six week threshold, let alone the bounty system that they put in place. And so it's it's ended. It. It's, I mean, at the very minimum, 85 percent of it is ended, which is clearly a violation of Casey and, and, and a violation of, of Roe v. Wade. Yeah. Um, and the fact that there is no harm. Well, there are they are shutting down. Continue. Uh, this law, because they had their government officials have nothing to do with the enforcement of the law. And I tip my hat to pro-lifers in Texas who Pause I don't it. think anyone should have to find a way around. Pause it. Government officials have nothing to do with the enforcement of this law. Where do you go to file suit? Who who is going to adjudicate this? Private entities, or is it going to be the third branch of our government, and that is the judiciary? Continue. Nothing to do with the enforcement of the law. And I tip my hat to pro-lifers in Texas who I don't think anyone should have to find a way around Roe. I think Roe is bad law and should be tossed. But in that environment, they have found a way to avoid injunctions on, on what they want to do and to find a way to restrict abortion um, working around Roe. But ideally, Roe goes, and then you have democratic deliberation around the country. Some states, it'll be uh, entirely legal. Some states, it'll be Ill illegal. Most states will be somewhere in between. And the public opinion question, Chuck, is what's the, what do people think of when they say most of the time or with some exceptions? Right. I don't think that's been fully probed. I don't think people have really thought that through. In a post-Roe Roe environment, they'd have to. I, I wanted those to drill down on something, though. You're comfortable with this sort of empowering the public to be uh, – some sort of bounty police force here. I mean, it's sort of a, this is an odd, an oddly written law. I mean, imagine if, if uh, this were done with other issues when it came to, to gun restrictions and things like this. I mean, this feels like turning the public against each other. Yeah, I, there's some precedent for it's obviously entirely a different realm, but my understanding like the false claims act has kind of a provision like this, but if, Roe weren't in the way. If Roe weren't blocking any significant expression of pro-life sentiment in Texas or in countries around uh, states around the country, no, you wouldn't do it this way. You would just flatly restrict 
abortion. So it's so a workaround, but it's caused by a distortion from the Supreme Court. There's no right to abortion in the Constitution. The left is just used to using that spurious decision as a way to block democratic deliberation and action on this. The reason he's like, the you can't use the False Claims Act, even like putting the the... I think merits of that aside, you can't use that as an equivalent example because that's about defrauding government programs, which everybody ostensibly benefits from. That's the undercurrent of that, as opposed to just one person getting an abortion. How does that violate anybody else's right who's bringing suit against them? It's it's, it's so different, but they're they're muddying the waters purposefully. The the point is, is that we have... Um, some structures like this, but the plaintiffs need to have some actual damage. Right. And if you are a taxpayer and you're the, the government's being defrauded, that's the damage. Yes. There is no uh, equivalent here whatsoever. And um, I, anyone can bring suit against uh, anybody who abets an abortion in Texas anybody and you can do it in multiple jurisdictions and you can sue the same the same person can be sued by multiple people and it's a minimum of 10,000 and I, I, I I'm gonna reiterate this with with Heather in a second but right now in New York and in California and in other states around the country there better be Democratic lawmakers who are writing up a law that say lawsuits carry guns, somebody can sue you. Shoot guns, they can sue you. $10,000. First Amendment. If you could abridge uh, a woman's right to uh, an abortion, why, why can't we abridge the First Amendment? We, the government's not doing it. I can sue somebody who's saying something I don't like. In fact, I want to sue people for wearing a MAGA hat or cargo shorts or saying stuff, you know, whatever it is. I mean, this this better be going on right now, right now in this state and in every state across the country that Democrats control the legislature. Let me flood the Supreme Court. If they're going to start this precedent, do it now. Start the law pass the law, have it go into effect in a week. Notice how he hides behind procedure there, too. Right? Of course. Uh, yeah, They're mean, really trying to uh, obfuscate this at all, uh, t- at all costs. And do you think that if there had been a law like the one that you're describing that goes after gun rights or God forbid, I can, you know, you can sue any corporation for being an amoral corporation in this country and go after them financially and you'll get a financial incentive to do it, um, regardless if, if you have standing, because it does affect the public welfare. Do you think that the Supreme Court would be like, well, you didn't file with the correct procedure, so we're going to just uh, uh, we're, we're not going to yeah. we're going to let this law take effect for a little bit until you procedurally follow the right the right way. If gun shops were like saying, uh, we're we're still alive. We're not sure if we're going to be around in a couple of months, though. If do you think he'd be saying there's no harm? And of course, I mean, of course. And that's why he wouldn't answer that question directly. And and this is they, they, they have opened up a Pandora's box. And if the Democrats don't rush in to fill that Pandora's box, folks, there's more of what you've just saw where that came from. That's if you hit the subscribe and like button. Thank you. Really, thank you.